I want to talk to you guys about how great speakers measure in real rooms. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delicella with Audioholics. Today I want to talk to you guys about how truly exceptional speakers measure in real room environments, whether it's a family room or a dedicated listening space. Now look, I'm very fortunate running Audioholics. I have access to the very best equipment, the best speakers, the best amplifiers. So when I get something that's really stand above the rest, when something that's really special, I love to just do experiments and show you guys how these things perform, you know, whether it's a high power amplifier or in this case, speakers. So in this presentation, I'm going to show you, this is my family room system. There's no real acoustical treatments in the room other than the front wall, which has kind of a diffusive, um, the whole wall is made out of a diffusion, but it's more for cosmetic, but it actually does serve some purpose. So it's pretty nice. And I'm using the Perilisten S7Ts for the towers. I've got the, the five seat version of the smaller version of the center channel. And I'm running a 5.2.4 system. I got two JL audio um, in wall 13 inch subwoofers. And of course I'm using the Marantz AV10 15.4 uh, channel ch processor and the Amp10 16 channel amplifier. So that's the setup that we're gonna be showing you here. As you can see, this is my front wall. I was talking about that diffusion. The speakers are pretty close to that front wall and I've got in-wall subwoofers behind it. And there's a lot of advantages to doing that. And I'll do a, a separate video on that topic in the future. So this is the basically how the room looks. Um, I said it's asymmetric because there's a glass slider on the right wall, which has those drapes on it, um, those shades, power shades. And then on the left, there's really not a wall there. It's it's more towards the front door, so the wall is further away. So it's not a, a very symmetric room. And when I ran the RT60 analysis on this room, I got a, an average of about 0.7 seconds. It's a little higher than I'd like. Um, I like to see between 0.3 to 0.5 uh, seconds for music, for serious music listening or movies. This is a threshold and I had to do a lot of tricks and I had to make sure I used a really good speaker to limit the vertical dispersion. And that's what one thing the uh, Perilous and S7T has an advantage for in a room like this. And you can see that's my couch. That's where I'll be doing the measurements. There's four chairs there. So I'm gonna make four microphone measurements and show you guys the measurements. And of course, my daughter's in the background photobombing us, love that. So this is at the main listening position. This is at the second seat over from the left. That's where you're equidistant from both speakers. And that's where I sit when I want to do critical listening. And you can see from 300 Hertz out to 20 kilohertz, this is the left speaker and the right speaker measured. They're almost identical. And this is in a room and this is sitting, you know, 13 and a half feet away from the speakers. That's quite incredible. And when you get speaker that is matched this well, this is what gives you that precise imaging. Um, having pair matching like that is just so advantageous because both speakers have very similar tonality. Perlison calls their beamforming array the DPC waveguide, and that's where the DPC stands for directivity pattern control. And you can see that there's a tweeter in the middle, and then there's two smaller, or about the same size, uh, mid ranges above and below it. And then, of course, that waveguide in the center. And the middle tweeter, of course, is beryllium. So here's the measurements across four seats. The left one is for the left speaker. The right one is for the right speaker. And look at how uniform this is. And this is, uh, you know, I'm using a little smoothing. I think it's one-sixth octave smoothing. It's not um, crazy smoothing. It's actually more representative of what you hear in the, in the room. It's getting rid of all the noisy reflections. So the, the acoustic beam forming effect is where all the drivers sum up and on, on the intended listening angle and subtract elsewhere. The performance targets the speaker a wide horizontal dispersion and narrow vertical dispersion. And you can see that my measurements show plus or minus 3 dB from 300 hertz all the way to 20 kilohertz across all four seats. That's over an eight foot listening area. And I'm getting such incredibly consistent results, plus or minus 3 dB. 
And you can see even at the far uh, seat opposite of the speaker, there's still good treble. I mean, that's just exceptional. I've not really seen that too often uh, when measuring speakers in rooms at multiple mic positions. Usually you see, you know, some more tapering off of the high frequencies or just some discontinuity where the, the mid-range and tweeters are crossed over. So this is the full range measurements with the left speaker and the right speaker with the subwoofers engaged. There's no EQ. I'm going to show you guys in a separate video how good I can get the bass from this when I use uh, Dirac or I use Odyssey, the Odyssey Pro Kit especially. So right now there's some resonances in the bass frequencies and I measured this at all four seats so I can EQ this. But I just wanted to show you uh, what it looks like, the raw response. And basically each listener is getting showered with consistent results. You know, this is an average of all four seats and you can see how that works. And I said controlling the polar response of the speaker impacts both the impression and on axis and across multiple seats from one room to the next. So that's pretty incredible. Now I want to show you a non wave guided speaker, and this is a very good speaker and you can see that there's some mismatching at the uh, transition between the mid range and the tweeter. Um, there's a, it's very good linearity still, but it shows some discontinuity between the mid narrowing and the tweeter widen in directivity. And you also notice that there's more high frequency roll off as you get further away from that speaker. So this is an, just a, an example to show you that there are benefits to having a waveguide, a properly done wave guided speaker. So the takeaways from this is the perilous and S17 measures consistently across a nearly eight foot seated area in a real room. Conventional speakers that don't utilize control and focus dispersion via waveguide technology, they typically don't behave like this. You can't EQ a bad speaker, and that's another topic uh, we could do a video. Actually, we did a video live stream on that with Matthew Pose and James Larson. It was a long live stream, but if you guys are interested in that topic, give me some comments below and I could do a short, concise video on why you can't EQ a bad speaker to get good results. But the thing about a speaker like this is it needs very little EQ below the room transition frequency. And because of that, when you find the common bumps and dips in your room for across all the seats, you can address the bumps with EQ and you can get a very linear response full bandwidth from 20 Hertz all the way to 20 kilohertz if you've got multiple subs. So a speaker like the S7T is because it measures so linearly and if you want to do any tailoring of the sound, it's very amenable to EQ. Now, personally, I only like using shelving filters to maybe boost or lower the treble. I don't typically like doing full range auto EQ or auto correction, especially if you have a really good speaker like this because it's so well matched as it is. So I think that's pretty much covers it. Um, yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a snapshot on how a, a truly exceptional speaker measures in a real room. Very pleased with the results on that. Like I said, I'll be doing more videos on room correction and how I can flatten that bass out so I can have very fluid sound, full range between the speakers and the subs, no boominess, and every, have every seat have good experience, both for bass, but for also for high frequencies and just general imaging of the sound stage. And of course, when you add more speakers to the mix and you do a 5.1 or above and you get an anchored center channel, then everybody can really get a good experience with music. So guys, I hope you liked this video. Please thumb it up, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audiohawks. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.